Hello everyone and welcome to this weight loss talk of how I lost 17 kgs in 8 months by Reina Rupani. My name is Ruchi Singh and I'm your host for the day. And you know what, even I lost 15 kgs on this diet. And Vandana Tiwari is the co-host with me. Over to you, Vandana. Hi. Hello, everyone. So my, my name is Vandana Tiwari. And I am your, your co-host for this evening. And you know, I also lost 16 kgs of weight by going on whole food plant-based lifestyle. So even I reversed my hypothyroid and my acidity problem completely disappear within a week. So thank you so much for listening to me and over to you, Ruchi. Thank you, Vanna. We are part of the Sharan team and Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. Our founder is Dr. Nandita Shah and she started this organization around 15 years back. I would like to invite Reina Rupani and uh, without waiting too much and uh, she would like uh, so that uh, she can share her part of the story and we can take this talk further. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruchi. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good evening and uh, uh, happy Ganesh Chaturthi to everyone and even Pajushan ends today. So um, I'm not a Jain, but they usually say Michami to come, if I'm not mistaken. So um, welcome for today's talk. I would like to know from the audience, how many of you would like to lose weight? If you can type on the chat box, how many of you would like to lose weight? Okay. Desperate to lose, Neha Singh. Nina, of course. Wonderful. You know, weight is actually a gift. Weight gain is actually a gift. I know you must be wondering, what do you mean it's a gift? Okay, Anuradha wants to do it for your husband. For your husband. Uh, okay, I'll cover that. But why is weight a gift? Because it comes to you and it wakes you up and you want to do something about it. Because if it wasn't there, then you'd be normal right in fact i feel weight disease everything is a gift it's a gift from divine to wake us up okay Gita is even particular about has the goal in mind at least six kilos wonderful there's something that divine is making us do right it's a wake-up call weight gain is a wake-up call disease is a wake-up call because we are supposed to be functioning in a particular way and when we are not going onto the road um, then, you know, weight gain happens, disease happens for us to get back on track. So see it as a gift and let's do something about it. Okay, Jayashri also wants to lose weight. Wonderful. So I'm going to take all your questions at the end of the session, but I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. So I, I would like you to be a participative crowd. Okay, so for those who are new, Sharan is an acronym and it stands for Sanctuary for Health and reconnection to animals and nature. And as Ruchi mentioned, this is an organization, an initiative, a social initiative started by Dr. Nandita Shah. And our mission is building a culture of health. Y'all already saw Ruchi, right? This is how she looked earlier. Okay, so you can see the difference in the weight loss. You also saw Vandana right now, right? Can you see the difference? Thank you, Ruchi. You also saw Vandana. This is Vandana's before and after picture. And once the woman changes, the house changes, isn't it? So this is Vandana's husband. Can you see the difference? All by change of diet and more, which we are, I'm going to be sharing with you today. So my story is how I lost 17 kilos of weight in eight months. Okay. And... Trust me, if you do what I'm going to tell you today, I hope everybody's got a notepad and a pen to make notes because everything that I tell you today, if you follow it to the T, weight loss is a guarantee. Okay? So let's start. First of all, I, when I was doing research for this particular talk, I was like, why did I put on weight in the first place? So I started thinking, why did I put on weight? And this is what I found out. 
you know, I was raised in a place where even if you breathed, you put on weight. That's Dubai. Okay, in Dubai, everybody, I mean, they say that uh, even if you breathe there, you put on weight because generally people tend to put on weight when they are in the Middle East. Then I had a loving mom who just gave me everything I wanted. So if I wanted only potatoes and chole, then that's actually what I grew up on. And in fact, after changing my diet, now I eat so many more vegetables than what I would eat when I was uh, younger. And if I wanted a cake or I want a Coke, I want chips, mom, no? So mom would just feed me everything. Then packaged foods were very normal in Dubai when I was growing up. Supermarkets were very normal. Having chips and uh, juices and everything in package was very normal growing up. And there was not so much awareness at that time. Lack of physical activity. You know, I was hardly into any sport. A maximum little bit of activity that I did would be dancing or cycling, but very less. So it was a very lethargic kind of a life, eating whatever you want, everything. And of course, I had a tendency to put on. So that's how it kind of started. And then I became a teenager. And I studied in an international school where I was the only girl in the class who was an Indian girl. And I was a very quiet and a shy and an introvert girl. And here we had all these people from all over the world, like from, I remember from Japan and from Lebanon and from UK and the US and everyone. And they were so outspoken, so fit, so cool. And I wasn't like that. And because of this, comparisons were there. And I started building a low self-esteem without even knowing it. To top it all, I was short, okay? So I always had this thing that, oh, I'm so short, you know? After 11, I just stopped growing, okay? So these were the things that were, that's my story, that was troubling me. You need to think about what is it that is causing your weight gain? Because once you have the why clear, then how becomes even clearer? So I want you to today make a note right now in your, in your diary that, you're going to find out why have you put on weight in the first place, okay? Then realization dawned that I'm trapped. And so then what to do? Because I've put on weight. So I went on fad diets, went on gymming, exercising, starving myself. And did it work? Absolutely. But only for a little time. And then I got into a loop. So I would lose a little, put on a little. Lose a little, put on a little more. Lose a little, put on a little more from the earlier little more. Anybody familiar with this loop? Anybody? Ruchi, if you can answer for me. If you can type on this chat box. I, is anybody caught in this loop? Yes, lots of uh, people are saying yes, they are caught up in this loop. Yes, so yeah. many yeses. <laughs> yes, so you can relate to what I was going through, through this loop, okay? And then I got married. And then, you know, you have marriage and work and relationships and stress took over, binge eating, weight gain. Then I got pregnant, weight gain. Can you see the loop, right? And then I would see all these sexy and fit moms. And then I started gymming and starving. And then back to the loop. Lose a little, put on a little. Lose a little, put on a little more. Lose a little, put on a little more from the earlier little more. Okay, until one day, something happened. But I said, hell with the sexy moms. This is how I am now. Actually, out of 10, probably two were the sexy ones and the eight were like me. So I said, who cares now? I've already got married. I've got kids. I don't need to worry. Everybody around me is like that. This is how I'm going to be. And this is how I looked. Okay, for quite a bit of my life, quite a good chunk of my life. And then, but apart from this, it was all coupled with acidity and low self-esteem. All this fat got me there. Jealousy, irritability, frustration, anger, severe acidity. And I'm like, what do I do? but I had a strong desire to get out of this cycle. And probably you all have this desire of getting out of the cycle and that's why you've come for this talk today. 
because if you don't have the desire, why would you come to listen to how I lost 17 kilos in eight months? So I had this strong desire to get out of this cycle. And it happened. When you have a strong desire, the universe conspires and makes things happen. And I went to a movie screening organized by Sharon. This was a film that I saw, Folks Over Knives. It was a Sunday afternoon. It was with lunch. I said, Chalo, let's do something different this week. Uh, it was only on health. And because I was on acidity and I had, I was put on several medication and I didn't, I'm somebody who hates medication. Anybody here likes medicines? Anybody in this audience likes medicines? Ruchi? Mm, uh, Can you type on the chat box? No. No, no, no way. No oh. way. Nobody. No. Right. Thank you. So nobody likes medicine. The health movie. I said, chalo, put seek lete. And Dr. Nandita Shah was there that time. She was the founder of Sharon. And, as, uh, and she spoke a lot about the film. And, you know, it made a lot of sense what she was saying. So I was still in two minds. Should I make these changes? What she's saying? Uh, since we are at Dr. Nandita Shah, I would just like to say a few words about her. She's the author of the book, Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. And she's a pretty unique doctor because she only uh, treats you with food and no medicines. So that was something which was very interesting because who likes medicines, right? And she's also received the Nari Shakti Puraskar, which is the uh, highest award for women in our country for the work that they have done. And she has helped thousands and thousands of people reverse or prevent disease simply through a change of diet. So I said, okay, I attended the session, I heard her, and one big myth in my brain, in my mind was busted. The myth was that I always thought a healthy food is what? Steamed. It's boring. It's like khali salad khana parega pura time. And it's, it's so bad. I don't want to get into it. And it's soups and starving. And I found out that day that healthy food is super delicious. And it's been six years for me. I still remember that menu because that menu changed my life. Of course, salads were there. I don't remember which salads were there. But I do remember the lasagna which was made with cashew cheese and it was delicious. And the Thai curry with brown rice. This was the first time I had brown rice and it was so good. And fig ice cream. And I remember taking two to three bites because I, I have a very sweet tooth. That's why I'm such a sweet person. But I actually took two, three and I really, really enjoyed the ice cream. I said, hello, uh-uh. If the food can be so delicious, chalo. Let's, let me give it a shot. So what did I do? I just stopped all milk and milk products. Whatever had milk in it, I just didn't put it in my mouth. Okay. And in three days, my acidity literally disappeared. It vanished. And I got really excited because I didn't have to take any medications anymore. So I started studying the Sharon website. I said, wow, this is something I need to learn more about. Then I saw their YouTube videos. I started trying recipes. Then I started looking for classes. At that time, six years ago, we barely had like one class in two months or three months. There were hardly any classes. We are very, very lucky now. And I remember I learned how to make peanut yogurt. I learned how to make cheese and brownies. And slowly, slowly, I started making all these things at home. And slowly and steadily, I started going oil-free. I removed the oil from my diet. And then I felt that I was a part of a community because there were other people doing it as well. I was educating myself, understanding. And trust me, there was nobody hand-holding. But because I was so excited about the fact that, you know, I don't need to have medicines, I went on. And I got my parents to change their diet. Um, I told my mom, you go for the 21-day program. If you don't go, I will never come to your house. So I kind of blackmailed her. And she went for the 21 day program. She was somebody who would get scared to eat mangoes and scared to eat potatoes, her favorites because she had diabetes. And she had those all 21 days. And my dad and my mom came back with zero medications in 21 days. They had 
10 years of diabetes and blood pressure. Can you imagine in 21 days? And this got me even more confirmed that this is a right way to go. So this is how I was. And this is how I became in eight months. And I didn't do anything. I just changed my diet. My exercise routine was same. Everything was same. And this is the difference I felt. And you know, the best thing, I didn't even do it for weight loss because remember I had accepted myself. So when I didn't even think about weight loss, weight loss just happened. Suddenly everybody started telling me, wow, you're looking good. What happened? You know, and then that got me more interested and I got more into, so I got into a positive loop. You know, I started trying new dishes and I saw a lot of changes in myself, which I'm going to share with you very soon. So I became vegan. Now I knew about veganism earlier, but I, would, I thought they all, cuckoo, what do you mean stop dairy? And how can you live without dairy? And today I'm talking to you because I've experienced the difference. Trust me. So I was already a vegetarian when I came to Sharon, but I ha used to have non-veg food. And I saw this documentary called Earthlings. And if you are somebody who eats animals, then please have a look at this documentary. It will really help you. It was, it was an eye opener. And overnight, me, my husband, my kids, we all became vegetarian because we saw earthlings. And then when Sharon came, we became vegan. So I stopped cow's milk products. Now I need to ask you, and I, I would like to take a few minutes to tell you why we should not have dairy. Because when you understand, then it's easier to do. You know, if I just tell you stop having dairy, but you have not understood the philosophy behind it, which I didn't earlier, but after I understood, it made so much sense that I decided to do it and it is easy for me to stay on the path. So can everybody in the audience tell me, when does a cow start giving milk? You can type it in the chat box. When does a cow start giving milk? Ruchi? Yeah, after the calf is born, Ranjita is saying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When after, she becomes a mother. When she becomes a mother. Absolutely. After a cow is born. So basically mammals get milk to feed their young ones. Isn't it so? Now, if it is a male, um, if it is a female calf, the female calf is kept, given a little bit of milk to drink and then taken away and kept on the side. If it's a male calf, let me show you what happens to a male calf. Ce jeune veau est né pendant la nuit. Il n'a que quelques heures et sa vie commence par un déchirement. À peine mis au monde, il est aussitôt arraché à sa mère. I remember I cried when I saw this video the first time because I'm a mom, I can imagine the tearing and that that mom's milk we take 
remember when we were feeding our babies our elders would say please be in a good mood because whatever you feel goes into the milk and goes to the baby isn't it so what is a cow feeling when her baby is taken away what are we drinking right so um this is a video which is in france but the same thing happens in india in fact the same thing happens everywhere in the world so the cow is basically lactating and then she's made pregnant again by artificial insemination so basically she's raped because obviously they're not going to wait for the cow and the bull to mate and then she becomes pregnant in fact just the other day dr nandita was telling us that the racks where they actually artificially inseminate the cows are called rape racks so she's pregnant and she's lactating at the same time now some of our audience must our ladies today now if your baby does not suckle on you and is not drinking milk what will happen to your milk can anybody tell me can you type on the chat box please if your baby is not suckling what will happen to your milk anita pinjani is saying it dries up it dries you correct so now thank you anita for that answer if the cow is not giving milk to her baby or giving very little how come she is giving so much more milk because she is fed with injections now i remember when i was feeding my baby i was told don't have any antibiotics don't have any medicines don't put any injections because it will go into the milk and come go into the baby isn't it so so if the cow is being injected with uh, you know with uh, growth hormones and medicines isn't that going to go into the milk and come back to us so what's in our milk when i'm talking about milk i mean milk butter cheese curd ghee there is pus and bacteria how does that pus come they remove the milk with machines the machines are usually left over there if some of you have used breast pumps you can imagine how painful it is okay so it's it's left over there this pus and bacteria formed so it goes into the milk even blood i've heard in canada that if there is blood in the milk they put chocolate powder and sell it as chocolate milk then there is antibiotics treated to uh, you know take care of this pus and bacteria pesticides i remember when i was feeding my baby i was told chana nahi khana because if you have chana the baby will get gas what the mother eat affects the baby so what is the cow eating you know i have seen them eating all the sorts of garbage and uh, all sorts of plastic right urea this is very famous in india where it's a fertilizer which is put into milk so when you're drinking milk you're also drinking pus bacteria antibiotics pesticides urea the the feelings of the mother cow the growth hormones and the toxic substances from the plastic that she is had basically the purpose of cow's milk is to make a 65 pound calf into a 700 pound cow as rapidly as possible it takes 18 months to do that so basically cow's milk is baby calf growth fluid and if we are going to be having baby calf growth fluid or any growth fluid we are going to grow so all i had to do was stop putting that baby calf growth flu fluid into my body and i started shrinking i'm going to show you a video of this little uh, calf you know he was freed just want to show you how they feel
Look at the gratitude. They're just like children. They want their freedom. Even their moms. You saw the gratitude that calf had for that man who freed her? When we start going on this diet, you have no idea how many unseen blessings we get. So if you're concerned about calcium, how do I get my calcium? If you see human breast milk has only 33 milligrams of calcium. So that means nature is saying that's the only amount of calcium we need. Look at sesame seeds. It has 1,160 milligrams of calcium. There are so many, this is just a very small chart. There are many, many other sources of calcium. You do not need to worry about calcium. Dr. Nandita has 50 plus, doesn't take a single calcium tablet. I know a lot of people who have got osteoporosis and arthritis who've stopped drinking milk and have actually started doing much, much better. So if it gives you calcium, cow's milk gives you calcium, well, that's a big myth. I hope that I have busted it for you today. So... The other thing which has got uh, fat is meat. So milk is pure fat, high protein, no fiber. Meat is also pure fat, high protein and zero fiber. And where do we get our protein from if you're not having meat? Well, these are some very few, I'm telling you, plant-based sources of you get it in nuts and seeds and legumes and whole grains. So really, we do not need to worry about our nutrition when we go on a whole food plant-based diet. In fact, when you have animal protein, it's detrimental to your health. So what has fat? I want to lose fat from my body. So I have to stop putting fat in my body. Milk, meat. The third thing which has fat is oil. Okay, this is the chart for oil. Can you see it's got only fat? There is no nutrition, there is not, no fiber, sugar, cholesterol, vitamins, nothing. Pure fat. But of course, our body does need oil. So, where do we get our oil from? We get our oil from peanuts, from coconuts, from mustard seeds when we have them in a whole form. The next thing which has fat is packaged and processed foods. That's full of fat as well. In fact, did you know that preservatives, pesticides, when we eat, don't eat organic food, microwaved foods, plastics, air, are stored in the fatty tissues inside our bodies and don't allow the fat to budge out from our body. So we, hardly, we don't have any packaged foods in our house. And if it's not there, we're not going to eat it. It's as simple as that. So if you want to lose weight, you need to remove these four things from your diet. Milk, meat, oil, and processed and packaged foods. And what will happen when you stop doing that? When you stop, when you actually go fat free, you will lose weight. You will get freedom from menstrual and menopausal problems. Acne, PCOD for youngsters, whoever, who, whichever youngsters who have joined us today, digestive issues, hormonal issues like thyroid, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, cancer, and so much more, right? So when we are not eating according to the way nature has designed us to eat, nature gives us a gift of fat and disease so that we get up and start eating right, eating the way she has designed us to eat. So what about the existing fat? Now there is already fat in my diet, right? What about that? How can I remove that? How did I remove that? All that weight, okay, I stopped putting the fat by stopping all these things. But what about the existing fat in my body? I added fiber. Fiber acts as a broom and removes the fat, existing fat in your body. So you first stop adding fat and then you start cleaning the fat which is already inside your body. Where do you get fiber from? Fruits, vegetables, salads, sabzis, green smoothies. Yum, yum, yum. Whole foods like vegetables and fruits with the skin, they become whole. Whole wheat, whole rolled oats, ragi, jowar, millets, brown rice, whole rice, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds. See, so much of a variety that we can actually eat. 
So Sharon has a five point plan to health. It's plant based, nothing which comes from an animal. Organic, remember what pesticides do to us and whole of packaged and processed foods. The only two things that you need to supplement as far as your vitamins and minerals and nutrition is concerned is vitamin D and vitamin B12. This is for any diet, whether you're a vegetarian, non-vegetarian, whole food, plant-based, vegan, wherever you are, you need to get your vitamin D and B12 tested. So this all happened and I lost weight. But when I was really thinking about this, I realized that there was something else that I was actually doing parallelly. While I was eating right, there was also something else that I was doing. But before that, I'll tell you what changes I noticed. I used to be very lazy. I became super active. I used to procrastinate things. Now I try to do them as soon as I can. I used to have a lot of confusion. Now a lot of sense of clarity. I used to get tired very easily. Now I feel a lot more energetic. I used to multitask, but with stress, now with a lot more patience. Severe acidity, no acidity at all since six years. Looking my age earlier, looking much younger. I have an 18 year old daughter. We share our clothes. She hates it. I love it. Absolutely. So as I was telling, oh yeah, and my skin, of course, started glowing. You can see that, right? Okay. So your diet is not only what you eat. Eating chalo, I told you all that you have to do. And once you start doing it, you're going to definitely see a difference. Inshallah, to jaldi ho jayega. Even weight loss will start. Now, of course, it's subject to if you're on any medication, sometimes medi medications or diseases uh, stop uh, weight loss. So that we have to check on. But it's also what you think and what you do. These are the three pillars to a healthy life, to a fit and healthy life. So I realized that I was actually doing Vedanta simultaneously i've been actually doing vedanta now since the past 11 years and uh, sharon came into my life six years ago so i had, was already a four five year old vedanta student by then and spirituality is really something which will help you when you want to lose weight or when you want to be healthy or when you want to be successful or when you want to be happy in fact in every aspect of your existence spirituality will help you what is spirituality? It's from well to better, daily self-surpassed. To tell you in simple words, what I'm what I'm going to be today is better than what I was yesterday. It's pure self-development. Developing yourself to becoming a better and better person every single day. How did spirituality help me? It made me look at life from a very different perspective. I started questioning I started analyzing. It made me accept myself. You know, being short was so detrimental to my growth. I used to wear these huge heels. I used to color my hair to grab attention. I used to do all these things. But once I started understanding life and looking at life in a different perspective, I used to get so much backache because of those big, big heels I used to wear. I couldn't walk most of the time, but I still wore them. It made me accept myself. I'm so, I'm so comfortable now in my chappals. I don't care a damn. The problem was in my mind. In fact, I remember my mom used to tell me, you will never get a tall husband because you're so short. And my husband is quite tall. And later I realized that never mattered to him. My height never mattered to him. Why should my height matter? Then I would think Gandhiji was short and Charlie Chaplin was short. So but I really worked on myself. And once I started accepting this, it made a big difference. It made me look for my purpose in life. I started thinking, am I here just to eat, drink, make merry, have fun, work? Is that what life is all about? Today is Ganesh Chaturthi. So I would just like to take a few seconds to tell you Ganesh symbolizes the perfect person. And I'm just going to tell you a few of his symbolism. Perfect person is, is, is where we need to reach. Big head, sorry. So you think big. Large ears, so you listen more. Small mouth, so that you speak less. And large stomach, so that you digest life's problems, life's issues. Life is going to come up with its issues. But suffering is optional. 
How I react to it is optional, right? So my friends laughed at me because I started changing. But you know, somewhere I thought I'm doing something right. It's not easy to get out of the herd because everybody's doing this and I'm doing something else. I, you know, my party is reduced. I couldn't converse with that group anymore. Things, and, and I know they were making fun of me, but somehow I felt what I was doing was right. Let me, let me continue. And I did. I carried on. And I'm so, so grateful that I did because I learned the importance of giving. I learned the importance of gratitude. I learned the importance of study. I learned and I became a witness of my thoughts, emotions. I'm very well aware how I'm behaving now. Like it's as if I'm watching myself act. I started responding rather than reacting. Not that I'm 100% there, I do react sometimes, but I immediately come to know I've reacted. So, so much change just by studying, just by embracing spirituality. And I found my purpose. And I want to share my purpose with you. It's because of this, I'm a part of this beautiful organization called Sharan. Let me share my purpose with you. That's my purpose, to speak for them who cannot speak. They're trying to tell us something, but we are not listening. So just want to be a medium to convey this message to, to them. So, um, so I found my purpose. And when you find your purpose, you're so happy doing your work that you really, really do not want anything else in life. And then when you don't want anything else in life, you get everything else in life, everything in life, actually. So I'm work in progress. And I'm just telling you by little changes, Life becomes so beautiful and meaningful. Then weight loss, weight gain, health. These are all different aspects in life. So to lose weight, what you think, you have to embrace spirituality. What you eat, the whole food plant-based diet. What you do, exercise and be dynamic. So now I'm going to give you some practical tips. Here I want you to think small. Set small and doable goals. May I suggest, once you get up, Dedicate only 30 minutes to empowering yourself. I cannot tell you how important this is. Study and watch an inspiring video. So I'm going to tell you how do we study. You choose a book that inspires you, any book that inspires you. Take a notebook and a pen. Open chapter one. Read the first paragraph. And write what you understood in your own words. Now, let's do it today. Let's take two, three minutes and do this exercise today. I'm going to open a chapter for you, uh, a paragraph for you. Okay. And I want you to just tell me, not write it down this time, but tell me what you understood from it. Your motto in life should be to strive, to struggle, not to succeed. Work well accomplished is the joy of life. Success or failure is immaterial. What really matters in your life is your ability to adopt action to obligation. Your business lies in action alone, not in the reward accruing from it. Let not the anxiety for enjoying the fruit disturb the course of your action. I highly recommend this book, The Vedanta Treatise by A. Parthasarthi. Brilliant, brilliant book. Can anybody tell me, just in two, three lines, or if you can put it in the chat box, what do you understand by this? Ruchi? Yeah, so Sindhu is saying do what we have to do. Lovely. And Sindhu is saying do what we have to do without expecting the results. Lovely. Shilpa is saying karm kar, phal ki chinta mat kar. Wonderful. 
Anuradha is saying, work without concern for the fruits. Lovely. Vishali, every step matters, every effort counts. Enjoy the journey, not the final destination. Do your own thing and leave the rest. It's the journey which is important. Work on the present without the outcome and lots more. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Ruchi, for sharing. And thank you, all of you, for sharing. Did you see what, what we did just now? We read a para, understood it in our own way, and then you have to write it. What is happening in this way? You're slowly training your thinking. You're slowly training your mind. I have been doing this since the past eight years, I would say, and I have books and books, and I can't tell you how it has helped me change my thinking for the better. Because really... Life management is nothing but thought management. If you can manage your thoughts, you can manage every single thing in life. So do one chapter, do a page, do two pages, whatever it is that you want, but do it. Okay. So this is, I wanted to actually make you do this so that you understand how to study every single day. Then listen to an inspiring video. Okay. Sister Shivani, somebody I listen to very regularly. There are many others. She speaks so much on emotional strength. I call this my mental gym. When I'm doing my uh, study, when I'm listening to something, it's my mental gym. We are doing physical exercise for physical gym. But what's most important is our mental gym. What are we doing for that? So uh, Rose calls this, uh, one of our colleagues, she calls it, um, mentibiotic, how we have antibiotic, this is your mentibiotic for your mental health. Because do you know that the biggest, the second leading cause of death, according to the World Health Organization in 2020 is depression. So we really need to take care of our mental health and get out of the negative loop and get into the positive loop. And that's not going to happen without any effort. We need to get out of our comfort zone and come back to where we are supposed to be. So may I suggest write a gratitude list. Oof, I can't tell you how important this is because I have learned that if you, whoever is grateful will never complain. This is my gratitude. I write it every single day. I have set a time. So what I do, I get up in the morning, I do my study. Then I write my gratitude list. And then I write my affirmation, okay? And this is, I keep changing my affirmation according to what I need to work upon. So these are just some affirmations that I write one whole page every single day. And there are these affirmations that we say, which I've learned from sister. Let's do it together. The first thing when we get up in the morning, I say, I'm a powerful soul. I am healthy. I accept everyone just as they are. Mere rishte bahut pyare hai. Mujhe kisi se kuch nahi chahiye. There are about five to six that we do every day. Mera ghar swarg hai. And I say that and I've kept a time. The time I get up in the morning, I say this. The time I go for my cycling, I say this. And the time I sleep, I say these affirmations. So I say the affirmations and I write the affirmations. Then I exercise. Cannot, I don't need to get into why exercise is so important. I think everybody is very, very well aware of that. Plan your meals food-wise. Green smoothie for breakfast. Fruits if you're hungry in the middle. A salad for lunch or dinner to begin with and slowly, slowly get into a salad at both times. Get in, learn oil-free cooking, super easy. Learn the basic dairy alternatives, curd, cheese, milk, tofu, you're done. And buy organic, simple. So this is some, kind, some of the food that we eat. This is our Mexican salad. We have dahi batara puri, we have dahi varas, we have... Uh, batata varas, we have laddus, we have tofu makhan wala, which tastes very close to paneer makhan wala. We have whole wheat momos, we have brownies, we have chaklis, zero oil, uh, bakharwaris, pakoras, pizzas, kebabs, even oil free puri. Okay, and of course, not to mention our beautiful fruits and salads, right? So, see, so much you can eat. 
and lose weight. So I'm just going to take two, three frequently asked questions before I end today's session. So I went on a whole food plant-based diet, lost too much weight. Everyone thinks I'm not well or something. What should I do? I had that same problem. So much so that my father actually called Dr. Nandita and told her she's lost too much weight, you know, and fathers, you know, you have to look like Kharte Pite Ghar Ke, like, you know, she's lost too much weight. Well, let me show you. This is how me and my husband were when I got married. In fact, Dr. Nandita saw our picture, uh, our wedding picture, and she said, oh my God, you look so much younger now. And then after we went on the diet, this is how we became. Okay. And then after some time, we became like this. Okay. So when you go on the diet, it's going to lose, you're going to lose. There's a lot of cleansing happening. You will lose extra, but don't worry. You're going to get back. Don't I look healthy to you? Do I look like starved and mean and sad to you? I'm sure the answer is no. Okay. All right. The next question, I'm stuck. I'm eating right, exercising, being positive, but still not losing weight. What should I do? Well, first of all, congratulations for eating right, being positive, everything. So what happens after you do this, there will be a time where your body gets stuck. And that's where you can introduce intermittent fasting. Now, go slow. There's no hurry. It took me about five years to start intermittent fasting. I was just eating right and everything so there's no hurry and then i started it slowly i went from 12 to 13 hours to 14 hours to 15 hours and then in eight hours you have only one cooked meal a day and the rest of the time you have um whatever you, whatever raw you want but i would never suggest you to jump to this first step is clean your wrong eating habits get into that because your body cannot suddenly take such a huge jump so you you know, even if you want to go to the fifth floor, you have to still climb the first and the second floor. You can't directly jump to the fifth floor. This is the fifth floor. So if you're somebody who has never gone on a whole food plant-based diet, I would not recommend this at all. Let this come gradually and it happens automatically. My family members are not ready to go on this diet. What should I do? Well, cook for yourself. Okay. Slowly and steadily introduce it to them without their knowledge. Like I would start without oil. I never told them. They want only tasty food. Who cares, right? Uh, when I would make a pizza, I would put cashew cheese and give it to them. They liked. Please take care of it. Please. But no one will be with you in your sickness. Your children will have things to do. Your husband will be there for a while, but eventually it will be only you. So let nobody else do it. You do it for yourself. And after seeing you, everyone will get inspired. That's what happened with me. After they saw me, my husband got inspired. So I didn't even have to tell him. He just got inspired. I travel a lot. What should I do? Well, thanks to the coronavirus, you're not traveling so much. But in case you do eventually carry fruits, nuts, seeds, oil-free snacks, laddus with you, ask for a green smoothie, have fruits for breakfast, look for plant-based restaurants, order sensibly. And last question, are all this doesn't work? If that's your question, well, if you believe, it'll work. You'll see opportunities. If you believe it won't, you will see obstacles. It has surely worked. I'm sure there's a lot of people in our audience who it has worked for. So remember, early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. But we forget the opposite. Late to bed, late to rise, anybody will make you? Anybody wants to type that? Ruchi? Late to bed, late to rise? Unhealthy. Ranjita, Ranjita is saying unhealthy. Sick, unhealthy, and dumb. Nitya Vijay Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> is saying lazy. Correct. Makes you, makes you unhealthy, unwealthy, and unwise. Anybody here wants to be unhealthy, unwealthy, and unwise? So simple. Just start sleeping a little earlier. Start making these small, small changes. Believe me, life is too beautiful. 
So this is how I lost 17 kilos in eight months and have not gained it back. Okay, because the spirituality helped me sustain it. The compassion helped me sustain it. And of course, my work helps me sustain it. In case you need support, now you know everything that you need to do, but in case you need support, then we have a six weeks to health gain and weight loss program, which is pre-recorded, which you can opt for, do it at your own convenience. We have a six weeks to health gain and weight loss live and online where we meet once a week on Zoom like this. And then throughout the week, we are in touch on WhatsApp. We are also coming up with a four weeks to health gain and weight loss program in Hindi. So if you have any of your in-laws or your uh, elder relatives or your parents who are more comfortable in Hindi, we are there to support you in case you need support. We also have a two months personalized consultation uh, th that is individually done. And of course, if you know the basics, you can even join our basic cooking class and learn the basics. We have so many cooking classes where you can learn like Vandana's next week having a class on how you can make cakes and cookies without, without oil, without dairy, without sugar. We have even writing gratitude and affirmations class. We have the mindfulness project where you will learn how to eat mindfully. We have the detox and the raw challenge, which comes at fifth floor. Remember that if you're already on this diet and need to shift a little more ahead, then go in for the detox program and the raw challenge. But there are lots, lots of options to support you. Now I would like to invite Urjita. This is Urjita. She joined our six weeks program in Bombay. And this is how Urjita looked. And this is how Urjita is today. Urjita has also lost 17 kilos of weight. Urjita, over to you. Hello, good evening, everyone. I am Urjita Parker from Mumbai. I am a professional from the field of um, creative communication and design. A mom to a 18-year-old uh, professional tennis uh, player. And I'm part of the Sharon team uh, at the Badala Farmers Market. So I started, uh, thank you, Raina, for a wonderful introduction. And I'm more than happy to share my beautiful journey of uh, 17 kilos weight loss along with you, my dear teacher. And um, I was in search of uh, right guidance for many years. So I kept hopping from one dietitian to another, from celebrity dietitians uh, to the lesser known ones. But the story everywhere used to be the same, the same plan, Adha Katori uh, Sabzi Khao, Adha Katori Dal Khao, one roti, a half cup of tea with two Mari biscuits and two fruits per day. So I still don't get that uh, logic of eating Mari biscuits and no parley ji. Uh, but that's how uh, it was and it felt like uh, punishment and complete deprivation of food and more cravings. There used to be instant weight loss, but the weight gain used to also be uh, very uh, instant. Uh, so no one ever explained uh, why milk is bad or why non-veg is harmful. So it continued for years and years and uh, a year and uh, a year and a half ago, uh, I happened to visit farmer's market and that too was uh, just to meet a friend. Uh, so since I was around, I picked up a few vegetables and fruits and uh, to save time. Uh, and I went home and I cooked them and they were so delicious and so tasty. There was a distinct flavor to it. So that made me think, what is it that making this food so special? I've never had this taste for a long time. I mean, I think the last time I had tasty food was in my childhood. And so it was, the answer was it is chemical free organic food. So it was a moment of truth and I, my, that taste started pulling me towards the Sunday farmer's market. Uh, Sunday after Sunday, I started picking up all my quota of uh, grocery and vegetables and fruits from there. And that was a kind of a start. And around the same time, I was introduced to uh, Sharan and uh, there was no looking back. It was an eye opener. Uh, Sharon had uh, all the answers that I was uh, looking for. So I first uh, enrolled myself for some cooking classes, uh, did my first uh, meal replacer soups with Vandana and Madhura, and I started cooking at uh, home accordingly. Uh, here I would like to emphasize is uh, I did not force any of my family members uh, to do it. I decided I will first focus on myself and get things right and they can follow if they wish to. And they did eventually. 
after that uh, one door opened uh, to the next and i did my six week uh, weight loss uh, weight gain program with uh, uh, rena and rose uh, where i learned what to eat how to eat and they did not teach me how much to eat there was no uh, limit to it it was limitless kitna bhi paid bhar ke khao so that was the most wonderful part my energy levels were high totally high my personality changed i was uh, different physically and mentally there was lot of peace calm positivity and weight loss was a by product happening parallelly there was no drama there was no deprivation uh, so after that i my quest for uh, more uh, nutrition went on and on and i did the detox program at sharan under madhura's uh, guidance and uh, that was a game changer for me as i was a heavy uh, tea drinker in my earlier days i used to have five to six uh, cups of teas for all occasions you are feeling good you have your tea you are feeling low you have your tea and for everything so when i did my detox i was introduced to raw and uh, i instantly gave up my tea at that time i was having nut milk though i had given up my milk uh, immediately after doing my six week program so i did my um, you know, detox and i went on to have herbal uh, infusion from there on that was a game changer uh, my husband who was a coffee lover and used to have 15 to 16 cups of coffee in a day to give up the coffee and uh, started having um, herbal infusion uh, after that uh, i uh, started following 70 30 way of uh, life 70 raw and 30 cooked that's only one cooked meal uh, per day and there was immense health benefits and again energy levels were high um, there was lot of uh, there are lot of uh, misconceptions and myths about raw and people also used to ask me how do you remain on raw like this isn't it dangerous but i would recommend to do this program of sharan the detox uh, program is amazing where you will understand what it is to have raw and feel the you know the next level of being healthy and uh, you know the well being so uh, i recently also completed two raw challenges with uh, madhura and uh, and i would i will highly recommend even raw challenge to all of you uh, give it a try at least uh, once so weight loss was so smooth and so pain free for me and it happened just fast i mean in spite of having everything i was having laddus burfis cheese cake breads and everything almost everything so that was how my journey was uh lockdown 2 was a blessing in disguise as i got more uh, time in hand and uh, because the work was at standstill so i did some more uh, sharan sessions um, cooked more implemented more focused on my fitness and lost 10 more kilos and people in lockdown were uh, uh, putting on weight and i had lost 10 more kilos there uh, so and now all of us are enjoying this uh, whole food plant based uh, lifestyle my husband used to have uh, means uh, extreme uh, lower back pain and muscle pain every day morning on waking up he is that pain has disappeared uh, he's lost 19 kilos and uh, he does 100 surya namaskars in a day uh, my, yeah my son who is a professional tennis player is also follows this nutrition it has helped him in his game and his fitness levels and here i would like to also mention that my son is off cow's milk from day one from the time he is born Uh, after i weaned him off the breast milk he has never ever tasted a single drop of milk and there are absolutely no health issues i would like to tell parents please free feel uh, feel free to go off milk for your kids don't force them with that glass of milk my son has not had a single drop of cow's milk and he is a 18 year old six fitter well built kid and uh, plays full time professional tennis so uh, uh yeah so that says it all and in fact we even wear my son's clothes now me and my husband wear his uh, t-shirts and his dry fits very often so that says it all and i am so thankful to sharan and dr nandita shah and the entire team for this uh, knowledge guidance and uh, uh, so much of decluttering of the mind which i call is my awakening so thank you sharan <laughs>